So, next two class as you are engineer and technologist will be treated as the managers. So, I will give an overview because I am telling why I am telling overview this is actually may be two semesters course subject and this part can be classified into two three elective subjects also. So, for the reason last next next 40 45 minutes I will give an overview of intellectual property management. Okay. So, I am not telling that as an asset, but I am telling the in the form of a property. Okay. So, now uh, how will you manage your intellectual property? So, there what are the different uh, part or different uh, uh, sub area you should look and what is the basics about those things I will just uh, explain to you and subsequently I will give you a few case study with reference to that. So, now uh, intellectual property management I already referred again last class also for the reason I refer uh, classified into three, two, three areas including natures, creation of right, transaction of right, enforcement of right. Now, all the three if you integrate properly then may come the concept of uh, management, okay. concept of how you are uh, managing uh, those the things. So, just like say I have referred here intellectual property portfolio management. So, if I consider ask you what is the IP portfolio of Google. So, whether it indicates that what are the different uh, business they are say they are uh, they have considering IP, whether they are the say uh, IP means owners or how they own those IP, just like say consider like this way. Let us consider uh, Google. Okay. So, I am considering Google having huge IP portfolio in today. So, definitely the questions will come up that how they are acquired that portfolio or how they are managing their portfolio or how they are enlarging the portfolio considering the business goal. Okay. So, just like say Google initially start with a search and also that business is there they start up come up with the start up may be with definitely with patents say by their own patents. So, just like say their own patent first thing why I want to refer own patent let us like consider patents only own patents is own IP. Let us say company form let us start up let us subsequently they are again creating then how they further extend in the defined business acquiring means they can acquire just you know the Google acquired IBM patents uh, similarly others patents also they acquired uh, and then ultimately they earn a but they are, they are extending their portfolio from search to that uh, telecom and other different sites and they are just like they are extending their portfolio IP portfolio not for just like the search from search inputting search they are extending to different area telecom and others. Okay. So, that way they are uh, how they can just like you consider you have some sorts of IP. Now, how can you acquire a dominant position in the market or how can you diversify your business whether you will directly diversify or diversify 
then whether diversify by acquiring somebody's some IP or creating IP or acquiring and creating. So, how can you make a strategy IP strategy for that? So, for management of that intellectual property considering your business goal. So, that way that uh, that part is come within the purview of may be within the early intellectual property portfolio management. So, I am referring here simply patent. So, subsequently others things are also may incorporated there just like say uh, design and trademark branding just like say how will you say brand a particular product or say uh, develop appropriate brand in a brand um, for a, a brand on that. So, for subsequently whether there is a chance of dilution of house brand based on the diversifications. Similarly, how will you merge or acquire a company? What will be the advantage, disadvantage with reference to the merger acquisition respects? Risk associated and the opportunity associated with those things in the form of IP and competitive advantage, all those things are also involved in respect of the IP management within the purview of a company. So, portfolio, portfolio means what are the different things just like if I could say oh, I have a 10 portfolio. So, then that means what are that uh, say in respect of patent uh, IP portfolio means what are the IP uh, the, the, the company have and how they have acquired, how they are using those forms of IP, how they are enforcing that form of IP just like if you see that uh, in, a, in respect of enforcement plaintiff versus defendant. You see that even Google like a big company they have two ultimately 8 versus 24 reported maybe more with reference to specific literature I am telling that they filed 8 suits and they have to defend 24 suits. Similarly, different companies also sometimes they have to file, sometimes they have to defend. So, this is that that all those things will come in the purview of the portfolio management. Okay. So, that way uh, I, uh, we will uh, discussed about the different sub area within the purview of uh, IP uh, management just like say uh, one of the component is IP audit. So, IP audit how what is the important what do you mean by IP audit just like if I consider uh, do an energy audit you are electrical engineer or mechanical engineer do an energy audit will I able to do that. Similarly, an IP audit so will will also able have to do it for what? purpose you will do that. So, there are different for different IP just like a literature perspective different sub classification is also there there just like a general purpose IP audit, general purpose event driven focused IP audit, focus just like let us say sometime called uh, focus IP audit. So, now uh, IP audit general purpose what is the importance of that? You based on the IP audit you will able to identify just like say why what is the purpose you may consider identification of 
of protected or non protected IP example. Let us say you are trying to find out just like in an academic institutes you are uh, performing this task. So, how will you start? Let us say general purpose IP audit, okay. uh, IP audit. So, let us you compile institute has say there is uh, no IP cell, okay. there is no uh, profession charge IP and there is no awareness about reference to the IP, they do not know what is IP and others. So, how will you start and audit it? So, in that case definitely first you have to build an awareness, then you can proceed with the reference to that, you can go to the different uh, labs and ask or frame questions and from that questions you may create and got some idea from that idea how to create a potential IP out of that or they have some unprotected say uh, elements. Okay. Uh, just like you consider also unprotected elements. So, how you can think about let us say consider it is not in a, a public disclosures or others situation, how can you advise them to protect or create rights out of that one part. So, now say in a organization you are trying to say perform an IP audit, then you have to identify, you will identify the different protected IP just like say uh, what are the different IP they have registers and protected and what are the unprotected elements. And here one component is also you will do that IP ownership part. Okay. So, uh, just like say uh, how are, why I am telling this part. So, some cases there will be some gap with reference to the uh, ownership in respect of the IP generated or created. Consider a IP have been created or a patent has been invented by students, technical assistants and professors and there is no deed of assignment, written deed of assignment from either of those persons. Do you think that title is perfect or ownership is perfect? If you read that Stanford versus Rossi case, that case that the students leave the institutes and subsequently that he has shared those idea let and the company have patented that thing and the university is also that there lies the issues of a written assignment. So, no implied assignment, no oral assignment, written assignment from the inventors is necessary. So, in that case the ownership part have to be considered that the ownership by virtue of assignment. Similarly, consider that your organization got the ownership based on say acquisition or based on say uh, as an assignee. Hmm. So, that case also you have to say look the agreement and see that what are the defects lies in respect of ownership of that IP. So, IP ownership you will able to find out what are the uh, defect in respect of IP 
ownership by virtue of IP audit, just like given the example. So, similarly, that say, uh, say uh, other part subsequent to the ownership, you are trying to find out how that the company is or organization is using some IP. IP. So, you have to find out whether they are using that IP based on permitted use. If say vice based on assignment sale or, or others that the different that part also have to check or using IP based on using some IP, then first use have to identify based on permitted use. Let us say use if it is the IP is still enforced, means if it is already patent if it is over or not that is the questions or non permitted use. Use that lead to the infringement. So, that way you can also able to identify that that potential threat to the organizations also you are stating. So, that way that IP audit is an important parameters when you are in a general purpose you are doing. Then event driven in respect of merger acquisition or you are uh, want to take a license or want to give license of your IP. There is another important task we call due diligence exercise. Okay. So, in that here because you are your potential intellectual property uh, you are acquiring or you are say uh, taking in license or in that case you have to think, think about whether they are the IP is a the from whom you are taking whether they are authorized to give you license or not. How will you check? You can check it. How? You can find out what are the patents they are providing license, then you see that whether really they are patent owners, but if you think that okay, from patent office sites I am getting there are the owners, subsequently they have the patent has been assigned or they are sub licensing, sub licensed, each sub licensing it and they are not permitted to do sub licensing. This is the difficult task you have to ultimately assess the agreement that license agreement whether they are permitted to sub license or say whether how will you get the right. So, they have to chain of title. So, sometime we call chain of title, chain of title just like say this is also applicable with reference to that uh, physical property means how he is got the title just like how the title title one uh, then how you write title means and owner one how he got the title first one it is one then how he got the title uh, like this way let us say here inventors or authors similar thing for copyright is also authors inventors then the applicant uh, like this way the chain of title this is an important parameters for identification of the ownership for identification of the person from, from whom you are taking a license. So, okay. so that way that IP audit is an important parameters in IP management tools. Just like say consider let us say Google have acquired the different company, then definitely they have exercised those due diligence exercise and subsequently negotiated and the acquisition has happened. Okay. So, this is the one important parameters that I am just like although this is uh, how the exercise can be done all sorts of thing is a uh, uh, important parameters, but just like general purpose IP audit then event driven just like when I will refer uh, specifically uh, just like a for merge uh, just like a in license out license situation or respect to merger acquisition you can do. And say limited purpose focused IP audit. So, limited purpose this is called limited purpose focused limited purpose 
focus IP audit. Just like it can be done when you are venturing into new business or some uh, you are thinking about say uh, dusty uh, decision with reference to written foreign patent filing in a, uh, a different uh, territories. So, in that case also uh, you may do a limited purpose focused IP limited purpose focus IP audit to ultimately uh, to ultimately manage your uh, intellectual property in the uh, different jurisdictions. So, IP audit will help you to identify the potential IP how say I got that I told you that you are living uh, visiting in a laboratory and from the laboratory on discussion you find out there is a chance of potential inventions from that laboratory. Then what are the steps they should follow? Just like what is the rule, what is the uh, what is the uh, motive behind laboratory notebook and record keeping? You may uh, refer them because this will help to identify the contribution of the inventors and the con to decide first and true inventors with reference to that invention because from that specifically the ownership chain of title with reference to the ownership, the origin of the chain of title with reference to the ownership or, or the title have been evolving. Then say you refer then you can refer whether you have to go for filing of that, how to file then you are creating a potential IP for that organizations from a simple idea specifically. Okay. So, that is one uh, component then another part is IP due diligence that I referred already that diligence is somehow called investigations. Okay. Just like say you have a potential IP or you want to acquire a potential IP then you have to investigate what are the defects in respect of that IP that is also linked with audit specifically whether the IP is the they are the I already refer the perfect with reference to that technology with reference to the legal. Legal means the ownership with reference to technology means you understood that part means whether that this technology is full proof. This technology is per se infringing another technology those kinds of things you have to investigate by means of a due diligence. So, just like when you want to acquire an IP or even in respect of in license or uh, uh, in respect of out license also you may go for due diligence exercise because let us say in a license agreement you are thinking about uh, getting royalty based on sale then you thought about that whether the uh, appropriate returns will get it based on the royalty from that company or not. So, the IP due diligence is also an important parameters uh, in respect of IP management. Okay. Then just like say if I refer here IP commercialization, if I ask how will you commercialize your intellectual property, what are the ways you can commercialize? So, you may thought about just like a commercialization. So, commercialization how will you commercialize your IP? So, commercialization involve just like you have a patent holders. If I ask how will you commercialize, you may thought about creating a startup just like a startup. How, how can you create a startup? Startup you are creating in the form of a legal entity. So, different types of legal entity you may create. LLP, partnership, limited uh, uh, just like a uh, uh, private limited companies different way. So, you may ask me how will you get the investment related to that investment or where from I will get the investment. There lies the two investment one is seed investment initially based on the proof of concept then you can go for capital investment 
capital investment will come from maybe based on angel investor concept or based on say uh, equity concept also may come up. So, startup is one of the things just like entrepreneurship that that part is coming that also you may create just like Google also have started with a startup type of situation. So, then they have just like they got the investment from that say uh, markets also. So, you get the investment based on uh, public equities also. So, that way that investment will come up then subsequently you will ultimately uh, proceed with reference to the uh, commercialization aspect. This is the one part that your own business you are growing then others ways how will you commercialize by means of licensing you take get income just license your patents license your patents just like you are not thinking about or you can go for assignment which will be beneficial you have to decide whether assignment or licensing will be beneficial because licensing means the ownership is still remain with you assignment means ownership is with the assignee ownership with the with assignee. So, you have to decide the managerial decision that whether you will be benefit if you transfer the ownership or simply give the permission. Now, here permission is also given in different ways just like exclusive or non exclusive basis. You can create multiple non exclusive licensee with reference to the simple IP in a particular jurisdiction or you can create an exclusive license C with reference to your patent in a specific jurisdiction. So, that way you can also get income out of your uh, IP licensing assignment. So, that way commercialization part either through startup or through licensing or through assignment or that you may say that yeah, I am selling my IP and further other part is also coming just like say I referred management part just like say sometime uh, that is part not say with reference to specific IP, but how can you enlarge the scope of IP they are the role of merger acquisition is coming up. So, the, the IP commercialization one of the important parameters. So, there are other other aspects are also there in respect of IP management just sometime uh, uh, we may refer a few elements now just like say uh, IP assessment. then let us say IP audit, then IP landscape analysis, IP strategy, IP health check, IP valuation, all those things are, are will come in the purview of IP management, just like IP assessment and IP audit I referred already. This is an important parameter, this is also one at least half semester course is a practical course IP landscape analysis. Okay. So, what do you mean by landscape analysis? just like say consider you want to uh, extend your business in respect of wind energy. Now, you want to do a landscape analysis with reference to that wind energy part. So, what are the things you have to means let us say your business diversification with reference to the wind energy because now you are got a patent specific to wind turbine now want to extend your business in respect of wind turbine specifically manufacturing. So, now you can uh, have to find out the based on landscape analysis two part you may consider market or 
competition competitive competition competition or technology part means so whether the no, just like a market means in respect to market how you are able to know based on landscape analysis what are the different uh, market players are there in respect of that wind energy in that jurisdiction where you are thinking about extending your own business and who are the uh, so just like how to how, how to face competitions from them so how will you identify the competitors or competitions in that market uh, and also another part that technology in respect of technology assessment you will able to that whether your technology is superior to those competitors or not, what aspects your technology have some uh, superimposition or diversification compared to the others. So, landscape analysis is also uh, help you in that regard. There is also another term is there sometimes is called uh, freedom to operate search within the part of landscape specifically. Then sometimes is called uh, patents intelligence mapping, IP intelligence mapping. mapping mapping those are the uh, different part is also there in the part view of uh, IP management uh, so so you will do a uh, say competitor search based on the patent search specifically you will able to identify with reference to wind energy you just give different uh, say uh, keyword with reference to that your technology and create sim, uh, create uh, equivalent word for searching. So, you can do a search with a reference to that those keyword then identify the different uh, patentee uh, in different now uh, so who has the patentee how, how many number of patents in respect of that which technology they are the patent holder. Uh, so, that that part you will do a search and analyze that part and also you analyze their patents if they are patent holder you analyze their patents then uh, identify that the short analysis I sometimes we consider strength weakness opportunity set uh, short analysis part uh, strength weakness opportunity set that how how which extent your patent is stronger to their part so whether you will get a dom uh, able to get a competitive edge over those <coughs> player in that markets or not so that way you will able to identify those things by means of uh, say IP landscape analysis sometimes it is mostly applicable for patents patent landscape analysis. So, for that reason you will see uh, uh, WIPO site and few so few landscape exercise with reference to wind energy or energy related part is already there you can visit the sites and get a knowledge with reference to the uh, landscape analysis how to do that this, this is a practical exercise uh, you may uh, take this as a take home exercise for uh, IP landscape analysis kinds of things with a reference to let us say uh, nuclear uh, uh, let us say turbine nuclear energy turbine let us similarly solar energy because these are the new area have been developing just like how to uh, and you will working in a, a company they want to diversify their business for those type of thing then how will you help them in respect to landscape analysis. So, take a um, you can th please take a take home exercise for landscape analysis with reference to the wind turbine specifically. I am just uh, closing here uh, subsequently I will discuss the IP valuation partly then I will show you few case studies from a WIPO sites.